When gods ruled the earth, Egypt before the pharaohs. Now, we're not going to talk about the Tully Papyrus, which is a witnessing of one of uh, the Egyptian pharaohs as to the landing of extraterrestrial, quote-unquote, Egyptian gods, the original overlords of Egypt. And he was really shaking in his shoes as he was witnessing the descent of these original overlords of Egypt. Now, for a pharaoh to state that, you can imagine how trembling he was. Now, this was obviously a UFO ET encounter to him as they were landing over the Giza pyramids. Now, according to the ancient Greek Plutarch, Ra departed to the heavens and Osiris became pharaoh of Egypt with Isis and they built Thebes, the present-day Luxor. Have you ever wondered about pre-pharaonic Egypt and its rulers? Not according to mainstream scholars, but according to the ancient texts written thousands of years ago by ancient Egyptians and also ancient Greeks. Now we not only have these texts talking about ancient extraterrestrials, ancient aliens and their spacecraft, we also have them as the sky people, the uh, star people of the Native American Indians, and also the Vimana UFO of ancient India. But in ancient Egypt, long before the first mortal pharaoh known as Menes Narmer ruled over the lands of Egypt, there were other kings, deities, and, quote, those who came from above, and, quote, kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. So there were other entities, those who came from above, quote-unquote, who ruled over the land known as Egypt today. This time in history, the pre-Pharaonic period, remains a great mystery for most scholars and Egyptologists, mostly because they cannot accept that what is written in ancient texts, since it goes directly against the beliefs of most historians, archaeologists, and Egyptologists today. The time before 3000 BC, the date when the first official pharaoh appeared in Egypt, is a great enigma. It's not a secret that the ancient Egyptians considered their civilization as the legacy of gods who came not from Earth but from elsewhere in the cosmos, and pre-Pharaonic Egypt seems to back up this theory. One of the most important ancient texts that can tell us more about this time in history is the Papyrus of Turin, which lists all the pharaohs who ruled over ancient Egypt. Not only does it list this list include all of the official, quote-unquote, historic pharaohs of ancient Egypt, but it also includes the deities or gods, quote-unquote, who came from above and reigned over the lands of Egypt before the first mortal pharaoh of Egypt with a lineage that spreads over 13,000 years. This is a great enigma, why mainstream scholars consider this ancient text as pure myth and why most details of the ancient text have been overlooked and even omitted from our history books. English Egyptologist Toby Wilkinson right, writes, they seem to have no ancestors, no periods of development. They seem to have appeared overnight. There are some researchers who believe that by calculating the decrypted information obtained from the papyrus of Turin, we obtain the initial period, referring, referring to, uh, referred to as the kingdom of Ta, P-T-A-H, the kingdom of Ta, creator and first ruler of ancient Egypt, dating back 39,000 years. Egyptology and the official histori historiography tells us that everything to the pre-dynastic era of the pharaohs is regarded as myth without much historical value. The Palermo Stile is another incredible ancient text that mentions the pre-dynastic rulers of ancient Egypt. This ancient column, or Stile, even makes reference to Egyptian god Horus suggesting that he was a physical ruler of the ancient Egypt, uh, Egyptian uh, th Egypt uh, thousands of years ago, another Egyptian god, Thoth, the Atlantean, 
is said to have reigned over the lands of ancient Egypt from 8,670 B.C. to 7,100 B.C. And I have a playlist with the emerald tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean. He describes their philosophy and their longevity and their space travel and really advanced technology. They even had um, uh, interdimensional travel. They were switching from one dimension to another. And he claims that they were abusing their technology. The, the divine God did not allow them to use that, but they did. And that he believes that that's why and, and was put to Atlantis by divine providence. But going back to this, interestingly, Egyptian high priest Manetho, who had access to unlimited ancient texts from the ancient library of Alexandria in Egypt. Alexandria is in the delta of the Nile Valley in Egypt, and uh, the city of Alexandria was established by Alexander the Great about 330 BC. So the library at the ancient texts from the ancient library of Alexandria, uh, the high priest Mantho wrote fra, for the pharaoh the history of ancient Egypt in 30 volumes, makes reference to the divine beings that ruled during pre-pharaonic Egypt. And if you look at today's Egyptologists, you'll find out that they too make use of Manetho's dating, considering it as a very reliable tool when studying the officially recognized dynasties, yet for some mysterious reason, these same Egyptologists have decided to avoid anything related to prehistoric dynasties, carefully selecting certain details and adopting them as their own while rejecting anything that does not fit into their view of history. So Manetho is considered as the father of Egyptology by many scholars today. We can trace back the rulers of Egypt in a series of ancient royal lists, and the royal lists of Abydos, for example, located on the wall of the temple of Sethos I, Set the I in Abydos offers us a chronological order of 76 rulers of any ancient Egypt that ranged from Menes to Sethos, Seth the I. In addition to this list, we have the royal list of Karnak, which can be found in the Louvre Museum in Paris, which has 61 rulers, ranging from Menes to Tutmosis III, these two lists offer us insight into the tradition of Upper Egypt. The royal list of Saqqara displays 47 kings previous to and including Ramesses II. More important than any of the above mentioned is the Turin Papyrus, and this ancient text written in Hieratic on the version of the papyrus with accounts of the time of Ramesses II, on the recto, which gives the approximate date of 1200 BC. In its original state, the papyrus must have been an artistically beautiful exemplar, as the script is an exceptionally fine one. It contains the names of kings in order, over 300 when complete, with the length of each reign in years, months, and days, and as the definitive edition of the papyrus has not yet been issued, Further study is expected to yield additional results. The papyrus begins, like Menetho, with the dynasties of gods, followed by mortal kings also in dynasties. The change of dynasties noted, and the sum of the reigns is given. Also, as in Menetho, several dynasties are added together. For example, some of the kings, the sum, the total of the kings from Menes to Anunas at the end of the fifth dynasty, the arrangement in the papyrus is very similar to that of the epitome of Manetho. Manetho provides us with a number of interesting details about the so-called divine rulers, quote-unquote, of ancient Egypt and their dynasties, which he divides into th three different categories. The quote-unquote gods, the heroes, and the manis, but many other, but many other authors, Sevius, Bishop of Caesarea in, Philist in Palestine and Suncellus speak of a lineage of gods who reigned on earth for a total of 36,600 years. And after this period of rule come the mortal pharaohs of ancient Egypt. This was sourced from ancient code and it's on Humans Are Free. Please leave your comments about this and thank you for your support.